What's up guys, the Strong Boys 19 here. This is going to be my return for occasional videos on my channel to do movie reviews. I know it has been a long time since I have reviewed any film, but I decided to make a change up. I want to review films that I do love, that are some of my favourites of all time. Just like with my review on The Silence of the Lambs, and the original 1978 Halloween film. And what could be perfect for me to talk about a 1970s masterpiece than this one? It's not my favourite of the decade, but it is one of my top most favourites of the decade. The mid-1970s masterpiece, Taxi Driver. Taxi Driver was released on the 9th of February 1976, it was distributed by Columbia Pictures, directed by the legendary Martin Scorsese, stars Robert De Niro as the main star. The other casting members are the very young Jodie Foster at the time, Peter Boyle, Leonard Harris, Sybil Shepherd, Harvey Keitel and many others. Paul Schrader did write the film and the soundtrack, which I will get to later on in the review, was done by the late great... Bernard Herrmann. Taxi Driver is my personal favourite Robert De Niro starred film. Even though that I love Martin Scorsese as much as De Niro, Goodfellas is actually my second favourite film of all time. But in terms of a film that has De Niro as the main star, this is always my personal favourite. I've been a big fan of De Niro for a very long time ever since I was obsessed with his acting that has been outstanding, influential and magnetic to some phenomenal performances of his from other films like The Deer Hunter, Raging Bull, the excellent remake of Cape Fear to The King of Comedy. But like with Godfellas, Taxi Driver is one of those films that I will never ever get tired of. It's not just a basic film. It's a very graphic, highly dark, twisting detail of a concept. The film is not for everybody, and it did stir some controversies along the way, but it still is, for me, amongst other people's reactions, as one of the greatest films ever made. What I really do admire about the film so much is not only to focus on the characters, it's not just about the music as well, but the film does go into a progression when you do feel as involved, it makes you feel engaged. It's an enthralling experience. Once you start watching the film, once you go into the mind and personality of Travis Bickle, there's no turning back. You will be looking into the eyes and the mind of the character. Robert De Niro plays Travis Bickle, who's a depressed, lonely, isolating insomniac with mental health issues, lives in a complete messy dump of an apartment, at the start of the film, he says he couldn't sleep nights, so he decides to have a job for himself as a taxi driver working for late night shifts. In his own time, he hangs out with his mates who works as taxi drivers themselves and goes to pornographic film screenings in his own time. He is a personality that's totally not obvious. He's a mysterious analyzing character. That's what I really like about the film as well. You analyze characters. A big part of the film that really sets the tone is his overall thinking. He writes a lot of thoughts down in his diary about his feelings, the way he thinks of people, being very negative, vulgar, descriptive words that they are from his own point of view to describing New York City as a whole, being very muddy, disgusting, wet and damp, and the people being like like the, the nemesis, or as Travis says, you know, the, the scum and other 
bad words to describe people. Travis is a character that does not have any heart and soul. He just looks expressionless. He tries so hard, some points in the film, to have some kind of interaction with people, have a change of mood and expression, but different people are so separate to who they are, and Travis is not really involved or not wanting to be involved with anybody. That's why he doesn't like to be interested, to be with other people, with whatever they're doing or who they are. The later characters in the film, Betsy, played by Sybil Shepherd, her acting is wonderful in the film. She's a political person working for a potential candidate called Charles Palantine, a senator, and Charles Palantine, played by Leonard Harris, brilliant performance by the way, Palantine is a very optimistic, workaholic and determined senator to win for having a voice of his own, for his political movement with his We The People quote and motivations. Back to Betsy. Betsy is a soft, more mellow and more of a quiet person differently compared to Travis. There's some points in the film that Travis decides to have an interest in Betsy and yet decides to volunteer for voting Charles Palantine. He's more interested and invested into her. They did have an attempt to go on a date. They did go out for one time properly into a coffee diner. For a second date, however, the date failed because Travis took her to a porno film, as I said earlier for what he does in his own time. Things did not work out, obviously. It made her feel uncomfortable and she will be away from Travis. Travis doesn't really have an interest to support Charles Palantine at all. So after that Betsy moved away from Travis, Travis got so much more stressed and he went on to be completely uninterested and be against the whole political movement. He hates every single one of them. There are other points in the film when Travis feels so much more anger and he has a growing sense of violent homicidal thoughts in his head and he would be coming increasingly desperate of wanting to do his best to be involved with other people. But like I said, the way other people react and treat Travis, Travis is just really against anything and everything they do. He decides to buy guns from Andy, who is a gun salesman, go for target practice, shooting different guns, practicing his stunts. There's a character named Iris. Iris is portrayed by a very young Jodie Foster. It's a controversial film, and this is one of the biggest, shocking, uncomfortable parts about the film. Jodie's character is a 12-year-old prostitute, and Iris is a prostitute obviously being used for sex, and she's an innocent teenager being involved with much older men, and their environment has been filled with gross, disgusting behaviour and misogynistic actions, and racism has been involved through that same thing as well, much to Travis's disgust. Travis decides to have a convincing talking time with Iris, that she has been involved with these bad people for so long, and Travis tells her to leave her apartment and to be away from that world. Harvey Keitel plays a character named Sport. Sport, I guess, is like the companion to Iris. But besides Harvey's performance being excellent, Sport as a character, he's a disgusting asshole. He's a verbal abuser to Iris and a drug addict. This is the ambition in Travis's mind after he buys the guns, practicing the shootings, that he wants to do something. He wants to stop the people who have been mistreating Iris. About the Charles Palantine political movement, 
Towards the end of the film, Travis shaves his head, wears different clothes, secretly hides his weapons, and it was at a point he would have attempted to assassinate Charles Palantine. That's another thing that stirred controversy about the film as well. After the film's release, there was an actual assassination attempt from a person named John Hinckley Jr., who tried his assassination attempt at America's president at the time, President Ronald Reagan in the early 80s. But I think Taxi Driver is a film which clearly does detail a lot of things around an existential and masculinity concept and theme. Besides the very heavy focus around the mental health on Travis Bickle, I think it's amazing and brave for filmmakers, film writers, and even actors and actresses to be making a film on doing what they can to detail mental health in a very careful and brave way. Because mental health is a hugely sensitive subject matter. But to me, Taxi Driver is one of the films that absolutely nails it. Once you will be diving into the darker, deeper thoughts in Travis's mind to the state of him in the progression of the film, to more of the graphic violence into the whole duration. This is one of the best portrayals for acting and the art of making something around these heavily relevant and continuing subject matters. Taxi Driver, to me, is an outstanding achievement. It is very hard for a lot of filmmakers to make something around mental health, to existentialism, to depression, but yet alone, some of the films have been mastered extremely well in these themes, and Taxi Driver is one of the best ones. With the things I've said about most of the whole surroundings on Travis's world involving the characters, do check out this film. The cinematography is outstanding, it's beautiful, and it's not only just the acting, but the directing as well. Martin Scorsese's directing is top-notch, and his brief cameo appearances have been awesome to see. One of the greatest things about it, it's not only on the acting to the performances, the character development, the music. The music was composed by the late great Bernard Herrmann, and this was his last ever score for any film. The soundtrack to Taxi Driver. I love many other films with soundtracks that I love. You got the amazing Jaws to the beautiful The Godfather, and some scores that are haunting and very descriptive and full of texture. But I think Taxi Driver is my favourite film soundtrack of all time because it's a piece of music which I can feel a connection with. It's personal and with a mood that I will be going into, whatever frame of mind it'll be, it's like that it's not just a film with characters portraying emotion. The film's soundtrack casts its own emotion. It's gorgeous, sublime, smooth, soothing music. And then to moments of heavy, dramatic suspense. It's a combination, but to focus through the eyes, mind and world of Travis Bickle, the music incredibly fits in with the overall storyline, the themes and everything that has been portrayed into an artistic expression of a film like this. The soundtrack is a classic. I have always loved this soundtrack very, very much. 
even though The Silence of the Lambs is my favourite film of all time and I admire the soundtrack as well, the Taxi Driver soundtrack is one that I will never ever get bored of. It may be repetitive to hear the theme of the Taxi Driver piece of music, but the way it's added with the future sequences to the different scenes in the film's progression, it does make so much more sense. Once you pay attention to the music and to the film, it's a well-made masterclass. That's personally all I would like to say about Taxi Driver. Let me know what you guys think of this in the comments down below. Is this one of your favourite films of all time? Do you think it is Scorsese at one of his best? Is this your favourite De Niro featured film? Is this your favourite Scorsese film or one of your favourites? Let me know. I do love the film very much. By the way, for me to talk about the film, there's a video that I loved watching that put this inspiration into completion. Check out a video about Taxi Driver from a YouTube channel called More Than Meets The Lens. It perfectly matches the heavy themes around masculinity and existentialism because that's what this film heavily dives into. You should not miss out on that video either. I suggest watch that video before you watch the film if you haven't seen Taxi Driver already. I'm going to give Taxi Driver 5 out of 5 stars. Obviously it's a classic, it's one of the greatest films ever made, as I said earlier, but it's one outstanding and essential achievement. No wonder many people see this as an influence, it's got its own impact, besides the controversies that it was generating from then to future later years. But Taxi Driver as a film is one of the best, most perfect movies of all time. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.